Today we're gonna look at a little bit of core strategy. As you know, I like to remove emotions out of making decisions while on the course. I'm gonna show you guys down that lens how I do my core strategy and how I make my T Club selection. Let's do it, right meow. Thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. My name is Kenny. Some of you may know me as Kenny Cat. I am a competitive golfer, and this channel is dedicated to my journey on what it takes to become a better competitive golfer. I have a 36 hole event that is coming up next week at the Tucson National Course at the Omni Hotel. It's where they play the Kohler Guard at the Champions Tour, or they play the Kohler Guard for the Champions Tour, and we're gonna be playing both courses, Sonoran and Catalina. I'm going to show you the different tools that I use in order to better understand how the course is laid out, even when I can't get a practice round in, and make some smart course strategy decisions. Let's go with the Blue Golf. I love this tool, if you don't use it, I would recommend you use it if you're a tournament golfer. We are going to be playing two courses, the Catalina course, which is the tournament championship level course, and also the Sonoran course. We are starting off, my particular flight is gonna be starting off on the Sonoran course, and I am playing from the white both days. I wanna take a look at the three clubs that I'll be using off of the tee and the dispersion, because after all, it's important that we know our game and the boundaries for what we can hit. We're gonna head all the way over to Arcos, I have selected the last five rounds because, as you know, I've been working on some different stuff with my driver, and these are the best stats that I'm going to have for what's going on in the course. So, I want to know what my left to right dispersion is, and in order for me to understand that, I need to look at what my general left miss is and what my right left miss is. My normal left miss is going to be this boundary right here, so 14 yards left of center. And then I'm going to say that my normal right miss is going to be this one, 56 yards right of center. That's gonna give us about a window of 70 yards between hazards where we can reasonably hit it with most of those shots that are gonna be landing within that area. Now, I know you may be asking, Kenny, what about these shots over here? Why are we not including that into your miss? These shots over here are basically the shots that you see here, those ones that just go left of the line. But on these particular holes, I've aimed them really far left because that's the way that the hole best plays. All of these ones that you see over here left are going to be the same shots that I hit up the middle and a little bit further left of where I'm aiming. I just aim these significantly further left. Second club that I'm gonna hit off of the tee is a three wood. So I draw my three wood, meaning that I start everything up to right. And these shots that you see over here to the right are typically gonna be ones that I block or hit pretty straight. So the furthest one right is gonna be 28 yards. And then those shots that I overdraw left are gonna move as far left as 26 yards, which gives my three wood a dispersion window of about 44 yards. And then the third club that I'm gonna be using is my uh, 18 degree two hybrid where this is pretty much gonna hit the center of the fairway most of the time. It's about 220 off the tee, and for the most shots, they're gonna draw a little bit left, and typically these are gonna be, you know, within a 30, 35 yard window for the most part. All right, now that we have dispersion figured out, I'm gonna to go to my next tool, which I use to plot my way around any course, especially ones that I'm not gonna be able to see until the day of the tournament. If you have not already used this site, Pro Visualizer, I highly recommend it. It is very good uh, for a couple of reasons of which we will see. My profile is already saved, and my profile is gonna have all of the shots that I normally hit and the distances they carry. And the best part about this is you get to use dispersion. Now, I love the dispersion because I can pretty much make the shape of all my shots, whether they're left or right, and then I can give my long, my short, and I can give my uh, top end and bottom end dispersion. I don't know if I have the course saved. I don't, we're just gonna search for it A to Z. If it's a pretty big course, it's gonna be in there. All right, lovely. And it takes us to the first hole, gives us a pretty good view of what we have to work with. And I like to select my top four clubs. And I love this. It gives the, uh, it gives the breakdown of where the clubs are gonna be and the distances. So that's my driver distance, that's my three wood distance, and that's my hybrid rescue distance, and then my four iron. So the first thing I wanna look at is, I wanna be as aggressive as possible, which means that I wanna be in uh, as close to the hole as possible. So in order for me to hit a driver, I wanna have enough dispersion left and right of any out of bounds hazards. And if I have enough dispersion, because I'm about 65 yards off the tee, then we can hit a driver. 
So these bunkers over here are right in the area of where I'm gonna be hitting a driver and a three wood. So in this case, it doesn't make any sense to hit a three wood over a driver. It may make sense for us to hit a shorter club off of the tee, but we'll look at the distance into the hole and then make that decision. So what I would do is I would measure my furthest boundary left. And I'm gonna be a little generous, right? Because I don't wanna be putting it right on this line. Let's just say that I could go as far left as this. And then I'm gonna to measure to my furthest boundary right. I've got 83 yards. And from that right bunker, I'm gonna measure from here to here is 71 yards. So this is a driver all day. I've got more than enough room to clear this, uh, to aim this driver up the left, aim it 14 yards from the left hazard, and let my normal driver dispersion pretty much fall into this area. And if we go ahead and hit that driver where we should be expecting to hit it, we're gonna have a 69, uh, we're gonna have a 69 yard wedge shot or 70 yard wedge shot to the center of the green. That's gonna set me up in a very good position to score. Now that we understand that, let's just quickly speed through some of these holes. I'm just gonna go through my decision making process and let you kind of get a backseat to what that looks like. Now in this scenario right away, I can already see there's just not enough room to land the driver. From my eye, I already can just tell, but I'll just confirm it to be sure. So from here to here, is only 54 yards. We're not landing a driver there because we're just gonna be in the crap too much. We're gonna be out of bounds. We're looking for our ball in the desert. The right play off of this tee is going to be a three wood. And I don't even need to measure it, but I will just for the sake of this conversation. It's 58 yards. It's a three wood all day. Three wood's gonna leave us 130 yards to the center of the green. There's no reason to take on the risk of hitting a driver and potentially being in the desert, out of bounds, lost ball, or in this bunker, just so I can have a gap wedge in my hand versus a pitching wedge. Fourth hole is gonna be 311 yards. And as you can tell straight away, there is a lot of junk going on up here with the driver. Three woods out of question, just because we're gonna be out of fairway. I feel like a four iron is just gonna give me a lot more ability to hit a smooth, comfortable shot. I'm gonna go with a four iron. All right, now this is an interesting one because we've got bunker trouble all the way up the left. And basically, driver, three wood, and my hybrid are all pretty much going to be in some trouble because you're really leaving me with two options of four iron, six iron, which I wouldn't want to hit. A, I don't know what this angle looks like from here. But four iron, six iron seems like it would be a statistical way to play this hole. I would prefer to just hit my driver and take it as it is. In all honesty, if I hit my driver, most of my shots are going to be over here in this little banked area. And I've really got 58 yards to land just left of the bunker. So I'm going to aim up that left bunker line with the driver. If it goes into the crap or the sand, we're just going to chip it out into the fairway and then try to get up and down for par or take our bogey and just get the heck out of the hole. But if we happen to land our driver, which most of my shots are going to be shaping off to the right in that area, then we're going to be pretty much good. Now we look like we have a pretty narrow fairway. It's not out of bounds and we've got uh, another fairway left. So a shot aimed left or pulled left is probably going to give us 70 or so yards to land into it. It's a driver all day. We got ourselves another short par four coming into the eighth. I think this one's gonna be a three wood. Driver is just, you're, you're, you're really messing with too much over here and I don't wanna be landing a driver into this junk. 55 yards of landing area, that's totally fine. I've got more than enough to carry this bunker. It's a three wood all day. All right, we're gonna have ourselves a 420-ish yard par four. Ooh, this one's, a, this one's a fun one. I may be able to carry this on a really good struck driver, so if I'm hitting the driver well, I can carry this bunker. If not, and I'm in the bunker, We'll just play out conservatively to this little area over here and try to get it up and down for par. Use our short game to make a smart strategy. All right, I think you guys get the gist of what my course strategy looks like. I'm actually gonna jump over to the Catalina course and go through that as a championship level course. So I'm gonna do those nine holes or that front nine so that way we can take a look at how my decision making might differ on a course with a little higher of a slope rating, meaning that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to play. Let's take a look at that. All right, first hole is gonna be 370 yards. So let's just set the tee position right there. Straight out of the conversation, this hole is asking some very, very tough questions. So 
We got water on the right, and we've got a bunker straight up the center of the fairway. The driver is out of the question. Three wood may be a play. We got 73 yards to land a three wood. Just curious, I want to see what the target distance would be if I hit a hybrid. It'd be 154, and that keeps me pretty much short of all the trouble. It's going to be my 18 degree hybrid. This course does not joke around. It's asking us to hit some quality shots straight out of the gate. And right away we can see we've got an interesting decision to make off the tee. Dispersion pretty much puts me in the fairway right here. I'm gonna hit driver off of this. And again, you can clearly see why this is a championship level course because it is asking some very tough questions. I don't think driver's the right call because 55 yards is just way too tight to land that shot in. We got 60 yards with three wood and a three wood is going to give us, if we hit it in the fairway and don't get blocked out by any trees, we're gonna have 100 yards into that uh, green. We're gonna take a three wood off that team. All right, now on this par five, or par four, excuse me, looks like this bunker just ends at 260 and it's right in my dispersion area, but We've got almost 68 yards of distance to clear this, and with a well-struck hit, I can definitely clear this bunker, and that's gonna give me a nice little 110-yard shot into the green. I'm gonna challenge that bunker, uh, and I'm gonna hit driver off of this tee. So we got this, you know, this really long bunker that covers the right of the fairway from basically 225 yards all the way up to 270. So there isn't a club that we're gonna be able to hit short uh, that makes sense as far as distance. We're gonna have to take that bunker on. There's 42 yards of space between the right edge of this bunker and this, so we're gonna aim this straight to the left, rip a driver, and just you know take our chances and make a smart decision from where we land. Hopefully we wanna be in the fairway, but if not, we can always play straight out into this uh, green from one of these bunkers. Typically the range is out of bounds, but depending on the color of the balls that are played at the range, knowing that I might possibly be on this line, I'm gonna switch my ball to a different color ball than what would be found in the range in the event that I get long and into this area if I decide to hit drive. That's just a little trick of the trade. Like if the range balls are white, I would hit a uh, yellow ball on this tee shot. If the range balls are yellow, I would hit a white ball on this tee shot. Okay, after some deliberation, I've decided what the tee club is going to be for hole nine. It's gonna be a three wood. Most of my shots are gonna be in this radius. So we're gonna be just short of the driving range because my three wood's not gonna go 260 plus. Like it may roll out to 260, but it's not gonna carry 260. The driver could easily carry into the, uh, into the range. And that's still gonna give most of my three wood shots a nice 170 yard shot to the center of the green, which is gonna be an eight to a seven iron, depending on what the uh, wind is doing. And if there's anything that you down that lens noticed, it should be how much different the quality of shots are required on the championship level course versus the other course that's on the uh, resort at Tucson National. I hope that you looking at this and how I go through my strategy helps you understand how A, you really wanna know your game really well if you're gonna have good course management. Some things that are true as a general rule are not always true overall. Like, it's generally true that being closer to the hole gives you a better chance of scoring lower, yes. But as you can see from many of the holes that I chose, I've selected four irons, two hybrids, like different types of shots that are gonna give my game the best possible chance of scoring the lowest on that course. One of the biggest things that I've learned playing with those better players is the idea of being aggressive versus less aggressive. I am as aggressive off the tee as possible within the limits of my game. I remember as I was starting, I would allow my emotions to dictate so I would get in situations, and I'm sure you've been there, where I'm like, ah, I feel like I'm hitting the driver well today. I'm gonna hit a driver on this hole. And I think it's easy to see, when you understand how your game works, why that's a bad idea. I'm super excited looking at this course for my two-day tournament. There's a lot of really tough tee shots in here, and this course is gonna definitely be punishing. But I know that as long as I stick to my strategy of st playing away from the trouble, sticking to my core strategy, and not letting emotional decisions get in the way of making good, sound shot selections, I'm gonna probably come out on the end of this tournament with a pretty good score. That's really all I got for you guys. Thank you very much for watching my YouTube video. Deuces, people. Let's keep it moving.